Well, good morning, and welcome back to Safari Joe's Adventures. I had some savings put back to buy a new boat in early 2020, and when I went shopping at a few boat stores, I found out two things. Number one, their production had dropped way off due to the coronavirus scare. And number two, they jacked up their prices on everything, about 10 grand. I ended up finding this particular boat in Laramie, Wyoming. This is a 2016 Targa. It's bigger than the boat that I was originally going to purchase, and it was about $12,000 less than I would have paid for the other boat. Well, sometimes it uh, is a good idea to look around for used, gently used stuff. This boat had very little hours. We tested it out, we picked it up, and we brought it home. Once we got it home, we decided to change a couple of things and add some things to it to make it more conducive to the type of fishing we like doing. First thing we did is took the original trolling motor off. It was a great trolling motor, nothing wrong with it at all. I give it to my son. And then I installed this Minn Kota. This is a Tarova iPilot. What I like about it, it's got like an anchor lock. You can park it out over a school of fish, hit the lock, it'll hold you right there all day long. You don't need to throw an anchor out and get your fish tangled up around the ankle rope. This will hold you right in place. And I can walk around the boat and control it with a remote control while I'm fishing, which is a great thing. And the next thing we're gonna add to it are some downriggers. They're a great tool for helping you catch fish that are suspended. Now these here are going to be the newest upgrade to our boat. These are Canon Unitrol 10 STX manual downriggers. Now there is a misconception about downriggers. A lot of people think they're for ocean fishing or for fishing in the Great Lakes or just huge lakes that have very deep water. And that's not true. You can use downriggers in any kind of body of water. Their main purpose is to get the lures you're using down to the suspended fish. They could be suspended 15, 20 feet. They could be suspended 100 feet or more. We do have a few lakes that are over 100 feet deep in places here in northern Colorado. And I do have my off-grid cabin in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And we will be taking our boat up there, fishing in Superior, St. Mary's River, other places, other lakes that have a little bit of depth in them. So these came in last week, and I'm going to put them together and install them on the boat. One of the things I like about the Canon Unitrol is it's complete. Most of your smaller downriggers like these, you just bolt it on and it's either straight out the side of your boat or straight out the back of your boat. These things have a universal mount on the bottom of them and they also have a swivel base and that all is included when you buy the Unitrol 10 XTS. Now I'm not sponsored by these guys. They just make some pretty good equipment. There's different brands of these out there. Canon's got a great reputation. That's why I went with them. I can mount it on the mount that I'm going to build for it and it can swing out for trolling or swing back for trolling or swing forward when you're traveling with it. It also has a quick release so you can unscrew it and pull the whole thing off the base and set it in your boat when you're traveling. The only thing this did not have or come with was the mounting base for a Unitrack system on a tracker boat. You have to buy those separate. You can find them online, Amazon for $79, kind of pricey. So I decided to make my own base for this. I went down and bought a piece of steel angle. This is uh, five inches by three inches, and it's perfect for making the base to set that trolling system on and bolt it to the side of my boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the box and assemble it. There's a little bit of assembly required. We'll go ahead and get that started. Base. These are pretty easy to put together. I think the hardest part is when you make the connection on the bottom of this wire, but we'll get to that.
This is your rod holder. Each one of these has a spring that goes to it. They're inside here. You just don't want to lose them. We're just going to put a spring on each one of those. Set them off to the side because we're not there yet. Here's something good for the instruction manual. Place to dump everything so you can see it. Just gonna put this quick release base on so it will stand in place. All right, you have five of these. They're the longest ones. They look like the same bolt, but if you turn them upwards, there's one with a smaller head on it. That's the one we're looking for. So take that one out first. Then you can insert this rod in there. Line it up. All right, this bolt with a small head fits in this side. That takes a Phillips. And then the back side of this, just set it inside there. Hold it in place. Take your screwdriver. And just tighten it down. Just snug it up. It's all the way tight. So we got that in. The next piece I want to put on is this end. This is on a swivel. So we'll turn it around, put it in here, line up the hole, take your screw, get it started. Tighten it in. And here we go. That's what your steel cable will run through and go down to your downrigger ball. I'm going to install this handle next. So we want to take this thread protector off. And then you want to screw this handle on. Get it good and tightened down. Next step I'm going to do is put on this rod holder. Now this is your two axis rod holder. We just put this in, it's kind of spring loaded, tighten this piece down. And then this other piece will sit on top of it. Again, this has got the little spring in it, so give it a little push, tighten it down. And this will hold your rod. You can adjust this, just screw that out a little bit. You can adjust it a little higher, a little lower, however you want to set your rod in there. And this, same thing. It's got two axes on it, so you can adjust this to where you want your rod. This is a termination kit that goes at the end of the wire that runs off your downrigger that hooks to your ball. We're going to put that on next. There's a rubber band on this. This is the bottom side. You want to crank this around till you find the end. Here's the end. So we just want to get in there and get rid of that rubber band. Once you have that rubber band off the wire, you can see it's not wanting to come out. What you do is you take this handle and you unscrew it a little bit that's like a clutch. The wire will pull out. So then you pull out enough wire to go through this over the top. Pull enough out so you have some wire to work with. And then you simply tighten this back up. You can see right there when you tighten it back up, it'll want to reel this back in. All right. And now we'll assemble the termination kit. It's these three pieces here. The first thing you want to do is take this little bell looking thing. Just shove that all the way through the hole pull it up the line. When you do that, sometimes this braided wire will fray like this. The hole in the end of this is pretty small, and sometimes when you push this braided wire through, it will fray on the ends like this. We need to clip that off. Get yourself a little pair of side cutters, reach up past that, and give it a clip. Now you got a good clean end to work with. The next thing you want to do is take this giant swivel, and this swivel end of this just clip through this little loop. It's a little hard, it's, but you can do it. Push that in there, and you want this together when you start this next process, just like that. So when you're holding this in this position, you turn it up, and there's three holes. We want to go to the farthest right-hand hole, so I'm going to turn this, and I'm going to take this wire and push through the furthest hole to the right. It's kind of hard to see, so once you get it in, you'll see it's going into this channel. We're gonna pull us out about eight, 10 inches of wire, and just go ahead and feed that through. So once you go around the top of this loop, you go through this hole on this end here, right in front of that little loop, and it goes down. You can see it comes out this hole right here, and we just wanna kind of pull that not completely tight, but we want to get it set over the top of that. Get just a little bit of tightness on it. And then we go back up through the center hole and you'll see that it's inside this center channel. And you just want to kind of go up just a little bit. You really don't want to go through into this loop. And now 
what we want to do is start feeding this wire back to tighten it up. So we go ahead and push this back up and pull it out and just repeat that process a few times until it gets tight. Whatever you do, try not to kink this because if you kink it, you got to start all over. Got everything tight. So now all we have to do is push this shut. And then after you push it in by hand, you can take a pair of pliers. Just make sure it's all the way home. Everything's good and tight. Take this bell end that you put on there first, slide it up, push that on there tight, and there you go. That's your termination kit. Just hook it up here for now and tighten it up. And there you go. We have two completed downriggers through the magic of film. Now all I have to do is build the base mounts that hook to the boat, and we can rig these things up. The next thing I want to do is build the boat mounts. These are the two pieces of steel I cut out to build the mounts. These are the bases. These are swivel bases. What I'm going to do is set these in this area right here. And I need to drill four holes so I can run some mounting bolts through these to hold this. And then I'm going to drill a couple holes in the back of this so this can go on the VersaTrack system. I'm gonna set the bracket in there. Line this up, get it square, tighten this down to hold it in place. All right, we've got the holes drilled in here to mount this base on. So I'm gonna take this out to the boat and measure it for drilling the two holes for the VersaTrack system. We're out here at the back of the boat and I'm gonna take a measurement right here of the VersaTrack system so I can get my height that I wanna set that downrigger at. I want it raised a little bit so I can put some padding under it so it doesn't scratch the aluminum. So my intentions are to put this right here and I want it level. Drop it down a little bit. That looks like level to me. You can see where the VersaTrack system is, so I'm gonna to have to drill the holes in here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, measure up one inch from the bottom, drill two quarter inch holes in this, so it will slide in this track system. We'll measure one inch from the bottom. Make a mark here with my little carbide pencil. Same on the other side. Give me a straight edge. I measure in one inch from each side also. I'll go ahead and drill the holes. There we go. Now I have all my holes drilled. I'm going to go ahead and clean this thing up, polished up, get the edges taken off so they're not sharp, and we'll get it painted. I can mount it up on the boat. I'm going to do the other one off camera. It's just rinse and repeat. Well, you can see the difference in these two. I haven't got this all cleaned up. I do have the corners rounded, but they're still rough. This almost looks polished. Everything's smooth on it. I've got it cleaned up. It's ready for painting. So I'll go ahead and get this one cleaned up and we'll get them both painted. All right, I've got these cleaned up with the sanding disc. Everything's smoothed out on the edges, wiped down with denatured alcohol. They're ready for paint. I have both of these painted. They're gloss black. I used an appliance epoxy on them. This takes longer to dry. I painted these last night and it said you should let them set at least 24 hours. I want to put some kind of padding on the bottom of this so when it's hooked to the boat, it doesn't scratch the aluminum. What I come up with is using some felt. And I needed two pieces, five inches wide 
and eight inches long. And it'll fit right in here like this. I'm gonna use the spray on adhesive. I've got the holes cut in them and they're ready to glue on. All right, I've got the swivel bases on the mounts that I made. Now I'm going to connect the quick disconnect to the swivel bases. Then get the other ones in and just tighten them down. You got the swivel bases on and this is your quick disconnect. I've got the felt glued on to these bases. All right, we're ready to put the downrigger on the boat. We're gonna turn this around. We just slide it in the Versatrack system. These are quarter by 20 bolts and nuts and bolts. And just move it up here a little ways wherever you wanna place it. Usually the further back on the boat, the better. And you tighten these down. Now that's good and solid. This is a swivel base. So we just slide it in and then tighten that down. That's your quick disconnect. So you can pull this off anytime you want. You can pull everything off, but typically you leave this mount here on and just pull the downrigger off when you're not using it, put it inside. Now we can turn this all around, set it in any direction you want. Nice thing I like about this is it's a complete unit. This section in here, the swivel base and the quick disconnect are typically something that cost more on your smaller downriggers. That's the reason I went with this particular cannon. It's all included. Not only that, this boom here extends out. This will go from 24 inches out to 53. And that's how you install a downrigger on a Versatrack system on a tracker boat. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, give it a like. Check out some of my other videos and you like them, consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I always like to answer and talk with people. It's just part of the interaction of YouTube. Anyway, thanks for watching and make your life an adventure. We'll see you next time and God bless.